Hey guys, this is Cameron with Addicted and Gone Catching Guide Service and today in this tutorial we're going to be talking about different baits that you can use for kokanee. One thing you're going to notice that is in this b-roll, I'm not using any lures so we've got a bunch of different baits we're experimenting with but I'm going to run through some of these good options for you guys to get out there and do some fishing when it's really crowded or the fish are being finicky and you need just that extra little bit to get them to strike. So stay tuned. Oh man, that's a nice fish. Downrigger behind you, downrigger behind you. Yeah, he's there. He's there. Oh, you got one right here too. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, oh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Not up to it. Got him. Nice one. All right guys, we're up on the lake doing some early season kokanee fishing today. And like I said before, we're not fishing any lures and stuff because right now the water temps are cold, the fish are gonna be wanting a subtle presentation and so we're just kind of running through some different baits. One thing I wanna say though, and when it comes to kokanee, we are feeding them nothing that those kokanee are actually eating to survive, right? There's no salmon egg hatch on the river, there's no tuna swimming around in the lakes. Like these scents and these flavors and these different baits that we're giving them are not what the kokanee are feeding on. So basically you're always getting an aggressive strike or you're getting a curiosity strike. Right now, those fish are gonna be giving us curiosity strikes. The water is gonna be real cold, it's real subtle. So I like to run through a bunch of different baits just to try to get them to tick. We know the fish are out here, but this early season fishing, they can be real, real temperamental. Another time you wanna start running through a lot of these baits is if you've got a lot of pressure on the lake. You got a lot of people fishing the same gear over and over and over again. It always pays to sometimes be just a little bit different. And I've come up to the lake in those situations where I've had a lot of people on there and I've decided to switch to salmon eggs, I've decided to switch to some of the gulp maggots, and I've really been able to put more fish in the boat because I stuck out a little different than what everybody else is fishing. Now first things first, you can't go kokanee fishing without cord. I think everybody on the earth knows how effective some shoe pay corn is if fish is straight out of the can, or you can do different cures and different scents just to kind of, like I said, make yourself stand out or be a little bit of different. But once again, there's no corn hatch going on up in any of these lakes. These kokanee, when they bite the corn, it's out of a curiosity strike, it smells good to them, they don't have hands to feel it, so they come up and they use their mouths. So, shupe corn, obviously it's a number one, it's pretty much the go-to for most kokanee fishermen. You can obviously add a lot of different scents to that, little different powders, different gels. Um, I always like to add a can of tuna to it, just because for me, this base seems to get it done more often than not, um, and it's always a good starting point. So I will never go to the Kokanee Lake without a can of corn and a can of tuna. Now another favorable option is salmon eggs. Now, when it comes to salmon eggs, you wanna make sure that you've got a good, durable salmon egg that can stay on the hook, and you, when you put it on the hook, you want to make sure that you're using like a real fine wire hook or something that when you set it through that it doesn't like pop the egg and then it just turns to goo and falls off the hook. They can be a little bit temperamental because if you're having a day where a lot of the fish are short striking stuff and they're just kind of nipping at the bait, these baits tend to fall off really quickly, especially if you're using like a natural salmon egg. And if they're doing that, you're going to have to make sure that you're really watching your gear and watching those rod tips because if you see those little short strikes, you're going to want to make sure that you reel that in and check that bait to make sure you actually have something on there because at the end of the day, they don't generally like to bite bear hooks too often. Another successful bait that I like to use at the lakes a lot is Nightcrawler and Earthworm. I don't put the whole thing on there because obviously these kokanee aren't going to bite a big old crawler that's going to be about 8 inches long. But if you put little chunks of earthworm on the hooks and run it behind your Brad's kokanee dodgers, that can be really effective for kokanee. And the bonus thing is, is that if you're fishing a lake that has a lot of trout in it, the trout really key in on these little chunks of earthworms. And sometimes I'll put like a little piece that will bridge the gap between the two hooks. And sometimes I'll just add little cut pieces too. Now going back to when I was talking about the fish being really nippy and being very difficult and just barely tapping the hooks and knocking your bait off, one good option to defeat that is using a Berkeley Gulp Maggot. These are little foam plastic baits and what these do is they stay on the hook really well. One particular time that I really like using these is if I'm fishing really deep on my downriggers and I'm out having to run stuff down to 60, 80, 100 feet and I'm always constantly having to go up and down, 
If I'm into a bunch of little feeders, I'm into a bunch of short strikers, I'll put these on my hooks and send them down just to hopefully have a durable bait that's not gonna get knocked off all the time where I'm having to cup, keep bringing the gear back up or not fishing half the time because my bait's gone. So if I see that, if I see that's happening, I'll go right to these Berkeley gulp maggots. They come in this natural color, white, pink, or chartreuse, and it's another great option for adding to your kokanee arsenal. One thing with the gulp maggots too, sometimes I'll put two on one hook and one on the other, but a key thing is with whatever bait you're using, don't put too much of it on those hooks to where it weighs it down and it kills the action from that dodger kicking it around because if it does that, I don't care how effective your bait is, if it's not wiggling and if it's not moving around, the fish are generally not interested in it. Now in the durability game, when you have like a lot of those short strikes or you're maybe catching a lot of fish, you can even go to small plastics like these little plastic maggots here. These are kind of a new item that's gonna be coming out on the market here soon. But as you can see, they come in lots of different colors and I've scented them up. And honestly, they've been working really good for when I have those days where the fishing's just hot and heavy and I don't wanna to have to waste my time rebaiting all the time. And you can scent and color these to your personal preference or whatever they're biting on at the time at the lake. Now another good option is salad shrimp. And one thing nice about the salad shrimp is it comes pre-cooked. It comes in these nice little chunks. We actually just caught a fish on one of them. But what you can do with this is you can just put little chunks of meat. It can be kind of soft. So one thing that I would recommend is to salt it the night before or add some of your favorite styles of kokanee cure or maybe even like salmon egg cures to the salad shrimp. You can get a nice color, you get a nice scent and you get good durability out of it too. So it's a real versatile bait. And like I said, you can really distinguish yourself against all the other kokanee anglers at the, at the lake if you're using something like this. Last but not least, but you can always use live maggots and live mealworms. One thing about the area that I'm fishing at, a lot of the retailers, a lot of the tackle stores don't carry that in my particular area, but I know on a lot of other spots across the country that a lot of guys will use the live mealworms and live maggots. They're real good versatile bait. They are fairly tough, but they got a real natural presentation to them because they kind of wiggle and they've got some other action to them. So don't forget to use one of those. I just don't have anything here to show you guys there, but you guys get the idea. One thing too that I always like to do whenever I'm using any baits for kokanee fishing is I like to use two hooks and I like to put one bait per hook. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to use the same bait on both hooks. There's a lot of times that come out to the lake where a salmon egg up top followed by a little chunk of corn sometimes can entice more strikes. But what I'm saying is don't be afraid to use combos. One other thing I like to do is I like to use a lot of times those little plastics on my front hook just because it's a real durable bait and then I'll put a little piece of corn or a salmon egg on the back hook so just in case one of them gets knocked off or swiped by a short strike, I still have something on the hook that the next kokanee that comes along, he can take a shot at. All right, I hope that gives you guys some other ideas when you come up to the lake. You know, there's been many days up here where I've had to switch my bait and switch my presentation just a little bit to entice more strikes out of these fish, especially if it's really pressured or it's early season when it's really cold and the temperatures are a little bit off. All right guys, so if you're first time here to the channel and you liked what you see, be sure to check out another one of our videos right here. Be sure to hit that bell and turn on that subscribe notification down below so you can see when we put out all our new content. And if you wanna be a winner of the day for making, leaving a comment down below like this guy right here, tell us like what you thought about the video or if it helped you guys with any new ideas when you're gonna head out to the lake. We'll see you on the water.